Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Brawley and El Centro Governmental Affairs uh, Committee uh, State of the City Address. Uh, we'd like to thank San Diego Gas and Electric, uh, SIMPRA, and Southern California Gas Company for sponsoring this event. Looks like it's going to be another beautiful Imperial Valley Day. Uh, first, we'd like to start the program with Aaron Popejoy, Ch President Chamber, El Centro Chamber of Commerce. Well, that was short and sweet. Thank you, Sharice. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2011 El Centro State of the City Address. As previously mentioned, my name is Aaron Popejoy, and I'm your current president of the El Centro Chamber of Commerce and Vis Visitors Bureau, uh, a fine institution, if I do say so myself. There are so many familiar faces here this morning, and we really ap appreciate you being here at this early hour. I know it's, it's usually busy in the mornings for everyone. I've been, I've been attending uh, this event myself for about the last 10 years, and I'm happy to say uh, that there are many survivors in this room with me today. Like me, you are representatives for this community, for El Centro, and for the Valley. I'm going to take some time this morning before we move on to our keynote speaker to talk a little about the chamber, just a little bit. Hopefully this feedback won't be too big of a problem. The El Centro Chamber is now in its 105th year of continuous operations. We were actually set up and running before the city of El Centro was officially incorporated, but that certainly doesn't change who we are or why we are here. El Centro is in our name and it's been our focus for well over a century. But it's time to look at the bigger picture here and the fact that we now represent the entire Imperial Valley, not just through our extensive membership, but as part of our actual mi mission. This regional approach was part of the evolution of the chamber that began more than a decade ago as the Imperial Valley Joint Chambers came into existence. This partnership continues to, uh, to, go, to grow stronger as each of the Valley's active chambers work toward having a unified voice. Our mission statement now officially includes our representation of the surrounding region, so it's important that I make it clear today, a subtle reminder that we're all in this together. Some of you have, may have read my recent article in the Sunrays newsletter titled, Our Own Worst Enemy. Without repeating the entire message, I'm hoping that most of you read that, the purpose, purpose of that article was to tell the community um, that we must move beyond our collective inferiority complex and work to correct this poor self-image that we have. It's imperative that we collaborate to overcome the negativity both internally and externally. It has to start with us taking more pride in sharing it with others. I believe we are smack dab in the middle of everything. You hear that all the time, rather than in the middle of nowhere. And I know you all do too. <laughs> Why else would you be here today? In terms of the chamber status, this economy has obviously presented significant challenges for membership growth. In turn, we increasingly focus on retention and improving our relationship and communication with existing members. We've made necessary changes in our policies regarding membership, renewals, and building, billing, including allowing some members to pay on a monthly basis. A big step toward making an investment of membership an easier decision for everyone. Some of you here in this room, even. We are a very progressive organization, and we are adapting just like the businesses we represent. The, cham the Chamber is financially strong with solid reserves and is otherwise a very fiscally conservative operation. We've made difficult budget decisions which have helped us persevere through the worst of times. Through it all, we have maintained our key priorities of creating a strong local economy, promoting the community, providing networking opportunities, representing the interests of business to government, and taking political action. Our regular newsletter email blasts uh, have updates and document how we are working to achieve these goals and priorities. So it's quite clear that we are working hard for our members. We are in a state that has so much to offer, so many resources and so much promise. There are still gold here, and I don't just mean the precious metal. But this is a state that also makes it increasingly difficult, if not impossible, to run a business, start a new business, or employ people. 
The chamber is very focused on protecting existing local businesses, and encouraging new business startups, thereby helping to keep current jobs while creating new ones. In fact, this organization has been recognized at the state level for helping its members stay in compliance with California's often confusing and challenging labor laws by providing materials and information to help them implement sound practices. A new governor and major changes at the state level have led to uncertainty as all of us see inevitable battles for proper funding of local and regional programs, including our RDAs and enterprise zones. I was happy to read, I believe it was just yesterday, that the city's budget will remain in the black, although we know this will require some shuffling and compromises. And I'm sure we'll hear about that in a little while. Recent events and legislation reinforce the need for the chamber to stay deeply involved in governmental affairs on a local, state, and national level. Our appropriately named Governmental Affairs Committee, of which our chair is Sharice Alford, is a forward-thinking and proactive group with their hands on the pulse of what is and is not going on. They are acting in part to fight job killer or the uh, newly renamed job crusher bills, often working closely with the Cal Chamber to do so. In 2010, they identified 37 job crusher bills and fought to reduce those reaching the governor. Only 12 did so, and all but two were vetoed. The same goes for the number of ballot measures that were defeated with the help of these combined efforts. We will continue to be a solid voice for businesses by staying politically active on their behalf. To clarify, we're here to support businesses, not individuals. We truly believe in, the pur in that purpose and that the goal is to achieve a better quality of life, a stronger community, and more local jobs, which benefits us all collectively. This includes emphasizing that our local government agencies favor the use of local contractors that hire local residents to do their work, supporting local families and making the entire economic engine turn locally. We continue to advocate for the prudent use of funding on a local level and seek to enforce the fiduciary responsibility of our elected officials and agency administrators. For those of you here today, which I know there are many, please, please stand up for us when you're making these decisions especially under the significant pressure of outside agitators. We absolutely must keep the playing field level and look out for the future of this city and county as a whole, not for the special interests or, off, or our often arrogant neighbors. On that note, we look forward to continuing discussions with the city council to determine a realistic reference index for adjusting the threshold for prevailing wage. And I know that sounds like a mouthful, but it's extremely important to us. We also appreciate the Council's ongoing involvement with our board and attendance at our meetings. We do our part by reporting our activities at Council meetings once a month. This is how we've created a conduit for better communication and why we can look forward to being partners in the future success of El Centro and the surrounding region. These are certainly trying times that will undoubtedly change the way most of us live our lives or run our businesses permanently. We've even lost some established local family businesses in recent years, which is very sad. But the Chamber has adapted this, to these new realities that we face and has taken the necessary steps to come out ahead. We continue to be a, to be a vital part of this community, a solid resource for our members, and a positive face to the outside world. In spite of the economy, our events have become, become increasingly successful. This includes our monthly mixers, last month's Christmas parade, where we launched the inaugural Christmas Bazaar, and one that we hope will become a signature event, and our annual Snowbird Breakfast, where a team of local service clubs and chamber volunteers took the time to thank some 1,300 visitors for improving this local economy. Today's event is part of that list, of course, as are our morning mixers, and next month's air show gala which is an incredible event, a very upscale occasion where we demonstrate our support for NAFL Centro. I think there's a representative here today from there. You do, do not want to miss it. We're taking RSVPs as of Monday, and I expect to see you all there. I should also mention we have our monthly mixer tonight. It will take place at 5 p.m. at Southwest Dental on the Brucery Road, which is on the far other side of town. The good news is, is you have about nine hours to get there. So, 
Please keep in mind that the Chamber is a volunteer organization comprised of local and community leaders working together on behalf of our members. We actively represent their interests in so many ways, and our staff is limited only in its number. It goes without saying that the people working for the Chamber on a day-to-day -day basis really keep the organization moving forward. Our CEO, Kathy Kenderson, has been with us for 15 years now. And her team is just as de dedicated, including Vicki Samora, who re recently also celebrated 15 years. Joanne Flores has now branched out into membership development after four years. And this year, we welcomed Tara Michelle Daniels to help with our mini events. And she's a new resident, too. I'm proud to be a member of the chamber and a volunteer within this organization. I hope everyone here today is a member and that you are ready to work with us to make El Centro the bright place to live and work. Well, that's enough about the chamber. Let's move on to our most important member. And before I do that, I would like to introduce uh, our sponsor for today and the Mardi Gras King. <laughs> Sebio Arbayo, will you come up and introduce our keynote speaker? Good morning. Our keynote speaker is the mayor of the city of El Centro and has been on the city council since 2007. He is also the dean of economic and workforce development for, or workforce development for Imperial Valley College. He has held different positions in administrative and managerial positions for the city of El Centro, the county of Imperial, nonprofits, school districts for over 20 years. He has also served in other elected positions having been elected to the Central School District in 1993 and re-elected in 1997, and also elected to the Central Union High School District in 2002 and re-elected in 2006. He has vast experience in city planning, workforce development, youth programs, and has also served in numerous boards and task forces. In 2002, he was recognized by the California Workforce Development Board with the Architect of Change Award. He was born in Mexicali and is, has immigrated into the United States at the age of 14. He grew up in Hopeville and has an associate's degree from Imperial Valley College, a bachelor's in public administration degree from SDSU, Imperial Valley Campus, and a master's in business administration from Northern Arizona University. A civic leader with dedication, drive, and compassion. Join me in welcoming the mayor of the great city of El Centro, Efrain Silva. Well, good morning, everybody. It is it's truly wonderful to be here. There's, there's so many friends of mine here that are joining me. I, I cannot be any prouder or any more humble to be in front of you. Uh, Eusebio read my bio, and, and, you know, and when people do this and they list the things that I've done over my life, I cannot help but think that ultimately I'm just a little immigrant boy that came from Mexicali, and this great country of us, of ours, gave me opportunities, and because of those opportunities, because of the mentoring, because of the help that I received from a lot of people, I'm able to be with you today, and I'm very proud to do that, to be in front of you. Uh, but I'm just a little immigrant boy that came from Mexico, uh, learned to speak English as an adult, and was given opportunities. And there's hundreds and thousands of kids like, my, like me that will also receive those opportunities because of the things that we do in Imperial Valley. <laughs> Thanks. There's an awful lot of people that I want to recognize, and I don't want to take a uh, a long time, so I'm going to ask, I do want to recognize some elected officials that are here with me today. Uh, they're friends of mine, and, and I feel that they need re uh, recognition, but if we go individually, I'll, we'll be here all, all morning. So I'm going to ask uh, the following elected officials to please stand, and let's wait until we all in introduce all of them so that we can give them a proper recognition. But Chairman of the Board of Supervisors, Jack Terrazas, is here, uh, County Supervisor Mike Kelly, is also here. Uh, Sheriff uh, Luera is here. Um, 
I, I didn't see Ray. Ray was supposed to be here, but uh, IAD Director John Pierre Menville uh, is also here. Uh, Mayor for the City of Imperial Mark Grant is here. Uh, uh, elementary Trustee Cesar Guzman is here from Brawley, so we have some Brawley representation. Uh, trustee for Central High School District Steve Walker is also here. And I hope I didn't miss any of the other elected officials, uh, but all of you guys are friends of mine, and thank you very much for joining me today, this morning. Uh, I also saw Captain Thompson here. Captain, thank you for, for joining me. I want to recognize two people that uh, obviously are two people that I love very, very much. Uh, she was not able to join me at the swearing-in because she lives in San Antonio. Uh, but I am so proud of my daughter, Erica. She's crying already. <laughs> uh, I want to introduce to my beautiful daughter, Erica, and her wonderful husband, Stan Brown, who serves in the military and right now is stationed in San Antonio. So can you guys please stand? Erica gets her emotional side from me. <laughs> I want to recognize, uh, in, in my presentation, we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about the city of El Centro and what a wonderful place it is to live in El Centro. In spite of what we have seen in the national media, and I'll get more into that in a while, but you know what, we're fortunate, I'm fortunate to live in the city of El Centro. Part of that is some wonderful, wonderful people that work for us that represent all of you guys. So for that, I want to recognize, and I'll do it as a, we'll do it as a group as well, uh, four wonderful colleagues in the El Centro City Council that we agree sometimes, we disagree sometimes, but ultimately, we all have the best interests of their citizens in El Centro, and that's how we make our decisions. So I do want to introduce my four colleagues, in the council. Uh, they're all former mayors, so they're all looking at me like, yeah, I've done that before. Uh, and so they're judging me. They're going to score me, I'm sure, at our next council meeting. But I want to recognize <coughs> all of them former mayors, uh, Mr. John Edney, Mr. Ben Solomon, Ms. Sedalia Sanders, and Cheryl Walker. Please be, uh, stand and be recognized. And also, I want to recognize truly who gets all of this done. We, we sit in our council meetings a couple of times a month, and we look at the agendas. We make the decisions that we have to make, again, focusing on the best interests of the citizens. But the, really, the, the key, the engine that makes this work in such a wonderful way is our city staff, beginning with Mr. Duran, our city manager, all, I, I, see, I think I saw most of the department heads here. I know our fire chief is here, police chief is here. Uh, you know, let me scope Marcela, our economic. Would all city staff please stand uh, and be recognized as well? <laughs> Terry, Chris, Luis, fire chief, captain, Leticia. I'll talk about Leticia in a minute. Christy, Grace, all of you guys. Uh, are really what makes this engine work. Buenos dias, de nuevo. Buenos dias, damas y caballeros. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me welcome you to the City of El Centro State of the City Address. And I want to welcome you and thank you for coming out so early to be here. I know a lot of you business people, you know, when they see me say it's so early, it's, this is not early for you guys because I know your day starts very, very early. My day starts a little later, so it's early for me. <laughs> I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce for uh, putting this together. The Chamber of Commerce, in, in my perspective, in the perspective of the city, is the key. Uh, business is, is what's going to make this city drive, and the support that they provide for business, uh, it's incredible, and the, the services that they provide for all of us, it's incredible, and they really are a key component of what we do. You know, as I thought about this presentation uh, for today, 
I could not help to think about how happy I am to live in the city of El Centro. Of course, it's not perfect. We, we have challenges like every other city in the United States has. We, our unemployment rate is among the highest in the nation. Uh, we have a lot of people that are working to get that uh, improved. Uh, I, see, I see a lot of industry people here, Mark Grant who, with Cal Energy. I saw Mario Martinez with ORMAT, uh, you know, and they're focusing on renewable energies, and renewable energies are going to be one of the solutions that will get us out of this, uh, this economic downturn. But we could be doing better, and we are going to try to do better. Our schools could be better, could be doing better, our summers could be cooler. Uh, I don't know how much control we have over that. But really, when you look to see what the city has to offer, I myself would not want to live anywhere else. I lived in LA. I would not want to go back to LA. You have seen over the last couple of years some negative publicity about El Centro and Imperial Valley. Some of us called us the epicenter of the economic recession in the United States. And one publication even labeled the city of El Centro as the worst place in the United States to live. How many of you guys agree with that? None of you guys do. El Centro is a wonderful place to live, and we're going to talk about why that is the case. Again, I want to assure you that uh, this council will continue to do the things that will improve the quality of life for our citizens and for our children. So, therefore, my theme today is that the El Centro is not the worst place to live. As a matter of fact, it is the best place to live in the United States. Where do I put this? Do you guys agree with that? We do. And we, the council and staff, intends to work hard at changing the way that people view our city and continue to strive our goals and uh, our actions to keep El Centro moving forward. As I stand this morning before you, very proud to be the mayor of El Centro, I want to give you some examples of why El Centro is the great place to live. Look at our mall. We have a beautiful mall that is active where uh, shopping takes place, where entertainment takes place. There's not many places that have malls like this. And we, we should be proud of the mall. We should be proud of the services that we provide. Like looking at you, and the fact that you're here also lets me know that you agree that El Centro is a great place to be. The city of El Centro shines with opportunity for all residents and businesses. Here you can raise your family, you can educate your family, you can start a business with the help of people that, uh, such as the Chamber of Commerce, and you can really have a successful life, a successful business, and a successful education. I'm very proud of the city of El Centro and what we've done in terms of embracing our cultural diversity and promoting it and enjoying it. There's a list that I'm going to go over of all the city events that uh, take place. And as a matter of fact, someone yesterday was sharing with me how happy they were to see all the stuff going on. We, we kind of take a break in the summer for obvious reasons, but once, once we start, we get going. Uh, in September, we have our third annual celebration of Mexican Independence Day. And that event was attended, <coughs> excuse me, by around 4,000 people. I take pride in that because uh, Mexican Independence Day celebrated in El Centro, that was, that was uh, a new, a new uh, theme. But we see how the community reacts to this. We see how much the community enjoys this. And I'm sure that we're going to continue to do that for years to come. It's a celebration of our culture, a celebration of our diversity, and a celebration of who we are. But that's a wonderful event uh, that takes place in September. It promotes our heritage, it promotes our people, it promotes our culture. It promotes that we are, in fact, a melting pot of diversity, 
and the respect for our cultures contributes to the strength of our city and our tenacity to always move forward in accomplishing our goals together. We've had challenges. How many recognize this? Uh, that was a consequence of our earthquake we had in, March, in April. The community, however, pulled together. We worked together, and we helped each other out. Very proud of city crews who responded immediately, ensuring public safety, clearing debris, conducting damage assessments, and responding to calls from the public. Our countywide emergency operations center was up and running in less than two hours. The city issued an emergency proclamation within 24 hours. All Imperial Valley municipalities worked together along with other agencies such as the county, Red Cross, uh, the hospital, gas company, and other people to help our citizens. Yes, businesses and families were displaced, but the city of El Centro worked with state and federal government to provide emergency shelter and financial assistance to organizations and to homeowners, particularly the homeowners that were impacted uh, at mobile home parks. The cost of the earthquake recovery to the city of El Centro in repairs and emergency protective measures alone were in excess of $4 million. And we still continue to streamline repair projects to make sure that all our citizens were, are able to get back to the places uh, that they need to be. I'm happy to say that we're here, we're recovering, we're smiling again, and we're moving forward. A disaster is sometimes the biggest testament of what an outstanding community is and where we live and how we are as a family working to develop solutions. I'm proud to say the city of El Centro, ladies and gentlemen, is the best. Let me highlight other things that are going on in the city that again reinforces the notion that we are the best. Let me talk about city budget and city and uh, budgeting and funding for a second. The city of El Centro has achieved a balanced budget despite the national economic situation in the state of California and its budget crisis. We just got a report in our last council meeting that we project again to be uh, not healthy, but surviving. Uh, we still have a reserve, adequate reserve. We have not laid off any city employee and we have not done furloughs. The city of El Centro received an upgrade bond rating from A minus to A this past October because of our stable financial outlook. And that bond rating designation ultimately is gonna allow us to save hundreds of thousands of dollars. Not many cities can say that in these days, and I'm very proud to say that the city has done it. Our nation has experienced one of the biggest recessions in history, and indeed, this recession has affected us. But we are fiscally responsible, and we have prepared to continue to take the necessary steps to protect the city's well-being. The biggest unknown factor and a major concern that the city is facing right now is the potential rate of local revenues and the state trying to circumvent Proposition 22 by using some creative mechanisms. We're asking all our citizens that have the ability to communicate with our elected officials in Sacramento, and if you've been impacted, if you've been helped by redevelopment agency, by enterprise zones, Make sure you let those elected officials know. It, it is a significant step that will hurt us tremendously if that takes place. And I know that we, as a city, we're working together to let the message to our elected officials that this is going to have a significant detrimental impact on our community. Part of the, the efforts from the governor is to de-establish the redevelopment agencies. And again, this will bring significant change uh, and impact our community. We'll continue to monitor and assess the fiscal situation, and for now, our city is financially strong. The finance department was just awarded a government's finance officer association certificate for achievement of excellence for financial reporting. I want to recognize uh, Leti Salcido, our finance director for having achieved this very elite status in financial reporting for three years in a row. So Leti needs to be recognized. Thank you, Leti. <laughs> and Leti has said it. 
uh, when, we, when we present her awards that it's not just her that does it, it's really her entire financial staff, fiscal staff that, that uh, gets it all done. Because of our, our uh, premium bond rating, the city of El Centro has, we are moving to refinance uh, our CalPERS safety plan set us, uh, funding, and that will save the city approximately a million dollars. We're also refinancing our uh, wastewater bonds, and that refinancing is gonna help the city save about a half a million dollars. We've been busy in the last year, and I wanna talk about some of the things that we've accomplished. Um, we had a major traffic signalization synchronization project. Uh, Imperial Avenue is mostly done, but you can see that on the good side, it feels good. And then you cross over to Orange, and it doesn't feel so good. <laughs> but Orange will be extended in the next couple of years so that the entire uh, street feels that way. Uh, Dogwood overlay, uh, we're working on that. There were some issues. Uh, related to Caltrans and some of the permitting process that uh, pulled, us, pulled us behind schedule, but that project is scheduled to be done now by March, and it's also gonna be a testament to our city. Adams Avenue overlay, that was completed, and uh, completion of the West Main water line project to serve our citizens on the west side of town. We also completed our adult center. I wanna encourage all of you when we're done here to visit our adult center. It's a very impressive building, and again, it's a means of providing a better quality of life for our citizens. Uh, we expanded our RDA building. The, I think there's pictures, yes. Uh, we installed new playground equipment at uh, Carlos Aguilar Park, uh, paved sunflower, parking lot. Uh, we upgraded our pond at Buckland Park. Uh, the snack bar over at Debbie Pittman Park was also improved. Main Street landscaping was also improved. Swarth Out, uh, Legacy Park project was also improved. Yes, things are tough, but things continue to move in El Centro. Uh, this last year, we received um, application for 369 new business license. And I hope all of them, Kathy, uh, join the chamber. If they haven't, maybe we can put some pressure for them to join the chamber also. 2011 is poised to be an exciting year for the city of El Centro and for its residents. And let me share with you some of the things that we are planning to do this year. We're gonna have a project on the extension of Waterman Avenue. The city of El Centro is bonding with uh, Measure D money to, uh, ab to be able to pave and improve about 85% of the streets in El Centro will be redone, will be first quality in the next two years. That deserves some recognition because, you know, I think all of us in the council say that that's probably the number one thing that we hear from our citizens, the streets and they're gonna be done in the next two years. Of course, those of us that go to the mall frequent, we, you know, we look at the traffic and we look at the, the, the bridge that doesn't seem to get done, but it will get done. <laughs> that, uh, that's also slated to be done by March, and it was supposed to have been done in November before the heavy shopping season, but uh, issues came up that we addressed with Caltrans, and we addressed a system that for future projects is gonna allow us to uh, do better and be able to complete projects on time. Our uh, bus transfer terminal project that I know has been in the works for four or five years, uh, this year it will, be, uh, it will start, right Marcela? Yes, it will start this year uh, so that we have an adequate transportation system for our citizens. A lot of sewer and, uh, sewer system projects and a lot of rehabilitation projects. 
That's what it's going to look like. In terms of safe neighborhoods, we are, um, the drawings for our fire station number three are completed and construction will begin this year. We also did improvements to our fire station number two in the parking lot area. And there's a picture, I think. Is there a picture of, uh, oh no, it's taken out. We are uh, negotiating with uh, property owner in El Centro so that the, city, uh, the city's police department moves into a new facility, an adequate facility that again will serve the citizens of El Centro better. The police department has a grant from the Office of Traffic Safety to uh, conduct a 2011 DUI campaign project and our wireless capabilities and our 911 capabilities will be enhanced also this year. In terms of recreation, as, as all of you guys know and suffered through our big earthquake in, in, uh, in April, uh, our library was significantly um, damaged we are working on finding a, a permanent resolution to that. None of us are happy in the council, the fact that we are providing such low level of library services, but uh, with, with, Mr. Uh, with council staff, we, did, we designated funding last Tuesday to move to a temporary facility, and I know council members Edney and Sanders are working on a task force to give the council some recommendations for adequate measures to provide better library services to our citizens. Uh, the splash pad uh, that, that's here on my right uh, will be repaired and will be put back online. The city also received a $2 million grant to build a skate park that will be in our Martin Luther King Sports Complex. Uh, we also will be initiating the construction of our indoor sports complex and that's slated to be done by December of 2012. It'll look something like that. We also are working on repair projects for uh, Sunflower School, restrooms, uh, the path, the walking path at Buckland Park will look like this. Fraser Field will be paved and special events will continue. Uh, we have our, our King and Queen coronation, coronation for our Mardi Gras uh, Eusebio is the, uh, the king, and uh, remember who the king, Silvia Preciado uh, with Red Cross will be our queen. Uh, if you haven't been to our Mardi Gras parade, please do so. It is a wonderful event that keeps growing every year. It's fun, exciting. I know people from San Diego come and they say that it is really a, a first class event and it keeps growing and I hope all of you guys are able to join us on February 19th at our Mardi Gras Light Parade and Street Festival. Our La Tour de Manure bike ride, uh, our Im Imagine Awards where we recognize businesses in the community will happen on March 24th and April 9th, the El Centro Music Festival and Fireworks Show. That's also a, a wonderful event. I wanna take, oh, it keeps going. Uh, <laughs> Well, we do have something in July, but we do it in San Diego. <laughs> we have, we go to San Diego and, and uh, uh, the Padres makes a deal with the city where they're able to give us some discount tickets. And I think last year we had like 700 people that, that went to this. One of the coolest thing I have to tell you, because the mayor couldn't make it to the, to the event, so uh, they do invite the mayor to come down to the field and to be on the field while uh, the Dodgers were taking batting practice, and I'm not a Dodger fan, I'm a Padre fan, but to be there when this is happening, it was surreal. It really was surreal. And we really had very strict orders not to step on the grass, and they were watching us, but when they weren't looking, I did step. <laughs> and I felt, I felt it, and then I walked into the path. But it was, it was surreal to, to be able to do that. Uh, Again, the, the Grito de Independencia, who is an event that keeps growing and growing. Uh, are we having another Padres Day in September? Oh, cool, cool. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, Fire Prevention Expo 
and in December, our, our uh, Christmas tree lighting ceremony. Under economic and beauty, uh, I'll go through this fast, economic and beauty, uh, uh, city beautification, we are continuing to work with the Colonia project and, and improve the basic infrastructure of the Colonia. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of sidewalk improvements in El Centro, a million dollars has been allocated for that. Uh, there is a picture of the landscape improvements that are proposed for uh, the freeway and 4th Street that I'll show you that is, the picture is impressive, uh, the rendering is impressive, we hope that the actual work really looks like that. And the trees will be that way and they will be perfectly trimmed and... <laughs> yeah, that's... That's how the, the, the intersection on 4th and the freeway will look uh, by the end of the year, I believe. That, that, no, is it, that, by the end of this year, Ruben? Yeah, by the end of the year. Uh, we're working on a system that would allow our citizens to, play their, to pay the utility bills online, a uh, shade structure, a solar panel project, uh, rehabilitating our restrooms to meet ADA compliance, and uh, other stimulus projects that are being proposed. Uh, $14 million, and I, I won't go through that, it's, uh, but it's significant improvements to the quality of life of El Centro. I wanna talk about the hospital very fast, quickly, because it is a city-owned hospital. It does belong to all of you, and El Centro Regional Medical Center is doing a lot of things to, again, improve the quality of our citizens. Uh, a new oncology center, we're having the groundbreaking, the, the ribbon cutting for that uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, our triage unit, uh, emergency room expansion and renovation. Uh, we have the Da Vinci robotic surgery system that is the latest there is. Uh, again, this is available to our citizens. We're working, the city of El Centro is working in conjunction with the hospital to build a uh, outpatient center on the corner of 4th Street and um, Main, the old side of the, uh, of the Fort, uh, dealership. That's scheduled to break ground in a few months and, and uh, be done by December, by December, right? Hopefully. So I just gave you some really general highlights of, of the city of El Centro and what we have done. So I think you all agree with me that those people that said that El Centro is the worst place in the United States to live, they're nuts. They're crazy, they have not been here. El Centro is a wonderful place to live. We have a wonderful community. I'm very proud to serve as your mayor. I'm very proud to live in the city of El Centro, and I know all of you are as well. Thank you very much for listening to me, and I enjoy this very much. Thank you. Well said, Mr. Mayor. Well, that concludes our event. I do want to thank our sponsors again. Um, this wouldn't be possible without our sponsors. And thank you all of you for taking the time to come out this morning. Uh, it's very important, especially we, we probably have some more challenging times ahead that we all stay in communication and be our own cheerleaders. And here's to living in the beautiful Imperial Valley in El Centro. Thank you. Have a great day.